Um, hey, everybody. Uh, just a show of hands, uh, who all is disappointed that I'm not, in fact, Chuck Norris? <laughs> yeah, I know. A pretty big letdown for everybody who thought I was a, a big, beefy guy. So um, I guess I'd just like to start off by thanking some of the people that helped me on the way down. So uh, let's see, we had Spencer, who was the first runner that I ran into. Um, very helpful guy, ran down, jogged with me, got to talk with him, kept me calm. And then Noah and Rachel. So yeah, Rachel was the, the lady that drove me to the hospital, uh, kind of kept me calm. We talked during the car ride there. And then Noah, who was just a champ, went and got my truck, drove to the hospital, dropped off my things so I could have my phone and contact my loved ones and let them know that a weird thing happened, but that I was okay. So I really appreciate their help. And then, of course, just my friends and family through all this. They've been really supportive and incredibly nice. So, sure. Um, all right. So, yeah, thank yous aside, I guess I can take some questions now. Okay. Um, so my experience as, I mean, I, I know you guys saw the video, but in person. Um, so I decided to go for a run uh, last Monday, February 4th. It was around noontime. Uh, I wanted to go on a pretty long scenic run. I uh, headed up to Lori State Park, and I kind of had a predetermined route that I was going to go on. And I knew that I wanted to do towers because I just wanted to give myself a hill challenge. So I uh, ran through the, the south side of Lori State Park, which is a couple miles, and then linked up with Towers Road, which is a, a really steep 4x4 four four road. It's about 9% grade on average, and it's uh, a little under three and a half miles to the top. So running up, uh, successfully got through the run and felt pretty good. At, up at the top, I was able to look around and really take in some of the views. So up there, you can see Fort Collins and, and the front range to the east. And then to the west, you can see the, the, uh, the rest of the mountain ranges and the Rockies uh, kind of descending into space. So it's super pretty. Get a good 360 panorama. And at that point, I was planning on running south to actual horse tooth uh, rock peak, which is um, just the really iconic rock that you'll see on the, the east side of town when you look at the skyline. Um, but I encountered some ice on the trail uh, about a half mile in, so I turned back and then decided to peel off on the now infamous West Ridge Trail and uh, cruise on that east to head and hook back up with towers and then head down. Um, but about a quarter mile into that run, I ended up hearing uh, some pine needles rustle, like a stick break, and I turned around and uh, just was pretty bummed out to see a mountain lion chasing after me. So I, I stopped and I threw my, my hands up in the air and I started shouting, and unfortunately the shouts didn't deter it, so it just kind of kept running and lunged at me. Um, it was going toward my, my face, so I threw up my, my hands to kind of block my face, at which point it grabbed onto my hand and wrist, and uh, from there it started to claw at my face and neck, and that's when kind of my fear response turned into more of a fight response, because I realized how close it was getting to my eyes, and it got a claw on my lip, and uh, I tried to throw it off me at that point, and then we took a little tumble down the south side of the trail, and down there just kind of had a, a little wrestling match, at which point I was able to get on top of it, uh, pin its back legs, so I didn't get um, any soft tissue scratched out in my nether regions. And um, at that point, I, I was grabbing around for sticks, um, I only had my left hand free. My right hand was still locked in its jaws. Tried to 
to get out its neck to see if I could uh, stab it in the neck to get it to release. Um, that wasn't working, the sticks were, were breaking. So then I picked up a rock that I, that I had seen kind of near us. Um, it was pretty heavy and it was kind of hard to wield. And I uh, tried to give it a few bashes in the, the back of the head. But uh, fortunately, I just kind of had a tough time swinging it with my, my arm still locked into the cat's jaws. Really wasn't working too well at that point. I knew with two, two pretty good blows to the back of the head that it didn't release, that um, I was probably gonna have to do something a little more drastic. And I was able to kind of shift my weight and get a foot on its neck. And at that point, I stepped on it, on its neck with my, my right foot. Um, and just slowly after a few, few minutes, um, I thought I'd be getting close and then it'd start thrashing again and had a few more scratches that resulted from those, those uh, thrashes at that point. And uh, I'd say uh, another couple of minutes later, it finally, finally stopped moving and then jaws opened and I was able to kind of scramble back up the hill and get the heck out of Dodge. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, in, I guess in my mind, if I replayed it, it seems like a long time, but I would think maybe 10 minutes at most. A lot of people who are attacked by other animals say that some of the most vivid memories they have are of what they heard and, and what they smelled. Can you talk about that? Um, I was actually kind of surprised on, about the silence of it. Um, there really wasn't any growls that I was hearing. Um, I didn't hear like, uh, um, yeah, any sort of cat noises that I would normally associate with a wild cat. Uh, the smells, I don't really remember the smells. I remember uh, looking down and seeing the claws, like retracting and then uh, coming out of its paws. And was just really looking at those because that's whenever the front paws were just kind of thrashing when I was on top of it. Uh, so it was, it was really um, pretty visually uh, intense, and I don't really remember that many smells, per se. Did that cliche kind of saying of your life flashing in front of your eyes, did you have a moment like that, or was it just pure adrenaline? Uh, it was just pure adrenaline. Uh, there, was, there was a certain point where I, uh, I kind of just imagined being stuck on this hillside and, and eventually just uh, having a cat gnaw at me, which is a, a creepy way to go. But uh, um, for the most part, the, the adrenaline just kind of kept kicking back in in those moments. Uh, one of my, my big fears throughout the whole thing was uh, another cat coming along because it was a younger cat and I could tell that it wasn't fully grown and I was just very concerned that mom was going to come out of nowhere and at that point that that fight would be over pretty quickly. Did you think you were, did you think you were not going to make it out of it, out of this? And, and after everything that you've been through, I got to know what you and Annie are doing for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there was a point where I, I was concerned that I wasn't going to make it out of it. And, and I think it might have been a mix of me tussling with the cat and it still clawing at me and then thinking about another cat potentially coming along. Um, and I, I just kind of, had had that wave of fear roll over me and, and, and thought that I could just end up there and, and stay there. And um, luckily that wasn't the case. And I am able to spend Valentine's Day 2019 with my girlfriend, Annie. <laughs> and let's see, tonight, I don't know. What, what are you thinking? <laughs> Not, mac and cheese? <laughs> yeah, somehow haven't gotten around to plans. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Can you describe the pain of an attack like that? Um, the, the pain wasn't, wasn't as intense as, as I would think it would be. That could also be for the fact that I just had really high doses of adrenaline coursing through my, my body. Um, the thing that hurt the most was my wrist, and that's just where the cat had kind of latched on. And um, at one point, I, I just me remember feeling um, jolts in my nerves and my fingers, uh, just because one of the cat's tooth was inside the, the kind of meat of my palm, and I just felt it kind of hitting that nerve over and over again, so these two fingers were just kind of a little bit electric. And then uh, it was grinding at, like after I hit it in the head with the rock, it started grinding its teeth back and forth, and I could hear kind of ligaments and tendons uh, shifting around in there, and that 
it hurt, but I, I also remember the sound of that was pretty disturbing. I was like, well, there goes all loss of function of my fingers, but luckily it's not the case. What's it been like getting all of this attention? And has any of it been negative? Um, so far, uh, everything has been really positive. I, I'm not a big internet guy, so I haven't really seen any of the negative stuff. Uh, it, is, it is weird uh, getting all this attention. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird to feel uh, kind of famous for like an unearned reason. Um, it's very much like a situation of happenstance where like a wrong place, wrong time instead of an earned sort of degree of, of fame, I guess. So that's been pretty weird. Um, yeah, th I, th I think that's going to be the hardest part is I will never be able to live up to the reputation and maybe that's what has led to some of my reticence for actually uh, coming out because I don't know the story is bigger than, <laughs> than my, my puny form, so yeah. What do you think Chuck Norris would think? Oh man, uh, Chuck would have come out without a scratch, you know him, <laughs> he's, <laughs> and he'd probably have the tiger slung over his shoulders too, not a tiger, a lion, sorry.